at Tadesawe Kanda, also live on 2 3 Gun on Facebook, the SFA Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. I am out for the concert. Tonight, the Attorney General has dropped some 61 charges against Nanapia Mensa, also known as Namwan, and Men's Gold at the Circuit Court. And he has now headed to the High Court with 39 new charges in a case against Namwan scheduled to be heard on September 19. We have the details of the latest twist of events with Nanapia Mensa. Stay with us. Also, Gabon's president, Ali Bongo, cries for help after the military seized power in a coup and put him under house arrest. This becomes the eighth coup in a former French colony in Africa. What's the catch in there? Stay with us. We seek some answers. I'm gonna tonight also a new twist in the race between the Francis Adainimo and Boatier Jacon to secure the fit slot for the new patriotic party flag bearer contest as the party directs that only national council members will vote. There's been some reaction to this already. Stay with us. We have the political scientist doing some analysis of the impact of this particular decision communicated earlier today after that crunch meeting by the leadership of the NPP earlier in the day. Stay with us as always. We are very, very interactive. The hashtag we're using is Ghana tonight on Facebook and Twitter. Let's get talking. Well, let's settle for Ghana briefs. Only National Council members of the governing New Patriotic Party will vote in the party's September 2 runoff between Boache Jaku and Francis Adainimo to decide the fates of the two flag bearer hopefuls. The decision was reached after a National Council meeting of the party. That members of the National Council are going to be the delegates for the election on Saturday. And the reason being that the constitution of our party under Article 103 gives the National Council the power to take decisions in the best and well-being of the party. And it's based on that that the National Council has taken that decision, one, to save costs and also to make sure we get it done as quickly as possible. <music> The Northeast Regional Chairman of the party, Fuseini Nuruddin, who was accused of supervising the assault of Alan Chermatin's agents in the Regional Voting Centre, has dispelled the accusations. He rather first earlier on want to attack the youth organizer at the process of voting. So when you want to attack, and the youth organizer was preventing himself, because if somebody wants to attack me first, he has to prevent, and when he prevents, he pulls the... The, the agent and then he uses his face to hit a wall. Customers of the defunct gold dealership firm Men's Gold have called for the speedy prosecution of its CEO Nanapia Mensa, also known as Namwan, following the filing of 39 new charges against him by the Attorney General. The aggrieved customers express hope that it will finally bring them the long-awaited justice. These customers have been trying to retrieve their locked-up investment since 2018 after the Securities and Exchange Commission ordered the shutdown of the company over infractions. It's a welcoming news uh, to, to the customers and I believe that it will bring some relief to the customers because at the end of the day, there should be justice. Um, we want justice not only in the, uh, the, the civil aspect, even though our ultimate goal is to retrieve our money. The Accra Region Police Command has filed a motion at the High Court seeking to stop the minority in Parliament and other groups from embarking on their planned protests against the Bank of Ghana Governor and his deputies 
Deputy Minority Leader Imano Amakufibwa and Chief Whip Gavins Kwame Agboja, however, insisted the protest will come off on September 5 as planned, via the same routes. The pleas uh, can be assured that if they decide to withdraw their, their motion, we can sit down and conclude on that. But they cannot tell us that we should go and protest at uh, Independence Square. Uh, what is the basis of, of, of that one? It will not be effective. So we are, our doors are still open, but as far as we are concerned, we have been stabbed in the back by the uh, Greater Accra Regional Police. Fear has gripped residents of Adwejiri near Nsawom in the eastern region after two people were killed and several others injured in the renewed chieftaincy dispute. Security has also been beefed up in the town to avert further clashes. We made a report to the police and uh, we are yet to see what they can do. I told him I was going to prepare his favorite meal when I returned from church. Upon returning, I was told he was dead. I'm Ali Bongo Onjimba, President of Gabon, and I'm to send a message to all of all over the world to tell and my family. Nothing. Well, well, we'll bring back that video, but that's the deposed president of Gabon, Ali Bongo, there. He is calling for international help for some noise to be made about what's happened in Gabon. Now, we'll find out whether that help will come, but interesting to note that the official language of Gabon, the former French territory, which gained independence sometime in, in 1960. It's French. But in this video, Ali Bongo spoke English. And that's how desperate the situation is uh, as we speak. But we understand even that the leader of the elite Republican Guard who led this coup in Gabon, as Bryce Nguema, is a relative of Ali Bongo, the deposed president. It points to a number of things. Two days ago, there was an election in Gabon. And as has been the case in previous elections, when they start counting, the lights go off and then internet goes down. The moment internet is restored and the lights come back, <laughs> some dramatic turn of events, Ali Bongo's party is leading and he becomes president. This time around they said no. And that's what's happened now. But if you look at the triggers of coup d'etats, at least on the continent, we're talking about nine. This is the ninth coup d'etat in the last three years here in Africa. These are the triggers, at least from what we have seen and observed over the period. Increasing insecurity, and we'll see that in some of the countries that we'll run through. Bad governance, amendments of constitution to extend their tenure. And that's what we saw in the case of Gabon. When Ali Bongo's father ex changed the constitution after 2003, when he was supposed to step down, he changed it and extended it his tenure. He, he died eventually and handed over power to his son. And his son is also continuing in the same fashion. And that's what Ga the Gabonese say they, they cannot continue. And we've seen this situation happen in most countries on the continent that have experienced the coup. The amendment of their constitution by leaders to extend their tenure. Economic mismanagement, corruption. These are some of the reasons that we, we've seen uh, the, the coups being the triggers for what has happened over the period. Now, the statistics when it comes to the number of coup d'etats between 1960 and 2022 are quite worrying, to say the least. Globally, this is according to the Powell and Thines data, the American researchers, 
Africa tops the number of attempted coups, and in fact, the successful coups as well, plus the, fail the failed coups we all, <laughs> the Africa leads. In total, there's been 490 coups as of the end of 2022, globally. Africa tops with 218 attempted coups. 110 were successful, 108 failed. Latin America, East of Asia, Middle East, Europe, South Asia, all follow in that order. Now take a look at this. Out of the number of coups that have occurred, six of them, six of the latest, the nine coups in the last three years in Africa occurred in the West African sub-region, Niger being the latest. And a number of the coups that have happened the last three years happened involving French colonies, that is countries that were colonized by France. There's a message in there, which we'll get into shortly, but take a look at this. In Mali, August 2020, the Malian kennels removed the president there. The coup followed anti-government protests over some deteriorating security, contested legislative elections, and agitations of corruption. You see one of the triggers there. Then when you go to the, the same Mali in May 2021, there was another coup that followed the first one. In Chad, April 2021, the Chadian army took power after President Idris Deby was killed on the battlefield. Guinea 2021, September 2021, Special Forces Commander Colonel Mamadi Dombaya also overthrew the President Alpha Conde. A year earlier, Alpha Conde had changed the constitution to circumvent the limits that would have prevented him from standing for a third term, triggering the widespread rioting. So you see another trigger there, changing of the constitution to extend the eternal. Sudan, in October 2021, Burkina Faso, our neighbors, January 2022. In fact, Burkina Faso experienced two coup d'etats in the year 2022. The second one was in September when the army captain Ibrahim Traore forcibly deposed Paul Henry Damiba, who was then the interim president. In Niger, just last month, we've seen what happened. President Bazoum overthrown by the military. And today, we're talking about what's happened in Gabon as a result of similar instances in the past that we have seen over the period. Now, what is interesting is that earlier today, after the coup, there was widespread jubilation in, in Gabon, and the coup leaders addressed the nation, outlining why they did so. Take a look. Les élections générales du 26 août 2023 ainsi que les résultats tronqués sont annulés. Frontières sont fermées jusqu'à nouvel ordre. Toutes les institutions de la République sont dissoutes. Uh, after the coup earlier today. And uh, later on the show, Ken Ofeso Sabwaje is, uh, is going to be joining us. Ken Ofeso Sabwaje, retired security analyst, is also monitoring situation as well somewhere in Sudan, but he's going to be joining us on Ghana tonight as a result of this incident, which he says, look, he's not surprised about and actually predicting that if things don't change, there may be, unfortunately, some of these instances increasing in the coming days. But coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, the Attorney General drops 61 charges against Nanapia Mensa, also known as Nam One, and Men's Gold at the Circuit Court and heads to the High Court with 39 new charges in a case scheduled to be heard on September 19. We have details of this particular suit and then uh, latest development with this particular situation, the 
customers of the defunct men's gold have been reacting to this particular development and matters arising. And we've been looking into the 39 charges, the new one, plus recall that there were 61 that Nanapia Mensa was facing prior to today. So what's happened to those 61 charges? My colleague Dennis Poberi with Dam has been looking into this latest one. He's joining me now for a quick conversation. And then also uh, Fred Forsen, who speaks for the aggrieved men's gold customers, is with us in the studio. But take a look at this. After making 36 appearances in courts without trial, former men's gold boss Nana Piamensa's plea is yet to be taken on 61 new charges in an amended sheet filed on September 3, 2019. Prosecutor ASP Haliga, while holding brief for Superintendent Sylvester Asari on Wednesday, July 26, 2023, told an Accra Circuit Court that the police were awaiting advice from the Attorney General after forwarding the docket to the office. The Attorney General on Wednesday, August 30, however, filed 39 new charges at the Accra High Court against Nam One after filing a nolly prosecutor at the Circuit Court. This means that the state has dropped all 61 charges and will no longer continue with the case at the circuit court. Namwan now faces prosecution with the new 39 charges. Per the charge sheet, Namwan faces 25 counts of defrauding by false pretense, contrary to sections 1311 of the Criminal Offences Act 1960, Act 29, and seven counts of fraudulent breach of trust, contrary to section 128 of the Criminal Offences Act 1960, Act 29. The other charges are counts of money laundering contrary to Section 12AI of the Anti-Money Laundering Act 2020, Act 1044. Well, so there's been some reaction to this, and especially because the case that was dropped, the 61 charges, has been running for quite a while now. Dennis Boberi with them is running through the latest uh, from the Attorney General. Dennis, what have we found? Well, so it's now become... Uh, public that the Attorney General is in the High Court now. Mm -hmm. He's withdrawn the case from the Circuit Court, which initially had a number of um, charges, 61 in all, against um, Nana Pia Mensa, Iki e. Nam One. Mm -hmm. Now he's the High Court with 39 charges, and we understand the case will be heard on the 19th of September, 2023. But the summary of the, judge, uh, the charges are as follows, and mm -hmm. the accused persons now on the charge sheet, as we have seen it, uh, three persons. One is a natural person, that's um, Nana Piamenta, okay. and the two are uh, legal persons, i.e. the men's gold, com the men's gold company itself, and mm -hmm. then the um, Brew Marketing Consult Limited. Now, what really are they charged with? These are the things that they are charged with. Um, so we've just tried to put all of them together, Good. and in all the 39 counts, you'd find number one mentioned in there. Because he played a key role in all the alleged offenses. Now, one has to do with selling gold contrary to Section 991 of the Minerals and then Mining Act 2006, Act 703. Mm -hmm. In that instance, there was one count. Now, mind you, the facts as has been given by the Attorney General are that um, Nam One was running two companies, Mines Gold and then Brew Marketing Consult. That's right. That were not licensed to sell gold. In fact, uh, for Brew, for instance, it was licensed to operate within a restricted regime, mm -hmm. but it went within, with, I mean, outside of that regime Good. to engage in um, selling within Ghana. In fact, its mandate was to be able to buy from small-scale miners and exports. It didn't have the right to sell to people who would then take the gold to men's gold to invest in there. That's the reason they were charged for that particular offense in one. Now, they've also been charged with operating a deposit-taking business without license contrary to section 61 and then 221 of the banks and specialized deposit taking institutions um, that's at 930 okay with that one two there's a one count now to put this in context mm -hmm. um men's gold was operating a system where they invited the public to make some deposits that you to, to take money in return for gold and all that that's right that is a, re a space that is regulated that is the same space that banks operate in they needed mm -hmm. to have been um, licensed to do that job. So this particular count speaks to the fact that men's gold did not have the license to do what they were doing. Okay. And in fact, in the facts that have been given by the Attorney General's office, they've been, they make reference to instances where the Bank of Ghana had issued notices for them to desist from 
um, carrying on that business, but they did not do so. What the AG says they did was the fact that in an attempt to circumvent the law, they changed men's bank ending in K to men's bank ending in C. I see. And then eventually to men's gold. Okay. So all those things are recounted in the uh, brief facts as has been attached to the charge sheet. I see. So there was just a change in, in alphabet for, for men's gold when they started. So there was the, the men's bank with B, A, N, K. Yes. And then when the Bank of Ghana cautioned the public not to do business with them, then they just changed their K to C with men's B, A, N, C. And they were yes. still in business. Exactly. Nothing happened and to them. And then they went further to change it to men's gold. I see. Now there's also the other issue of uh, the charge of inducement um, to invest contrary to Section 344 of the Companies Act. That essentially says that um, what men's gold was doing was to represent to people what was not factually accurate, mm -hmm. that there was an opportunity for them to make money, and that was by way of promising them uh, interest rates of between 7 and 10 percent, and that is the reason for which that count has been there. Okay. Now, the one that has the highest count of um, offenses is the defrauding by false pretenses, and that is contrary to Section um, 1311 of the Criminal Offenses Act, mm -hmm. Act 29. In respect of this, that's... Um, the one that has the most, what it simply means is that in, in 22 instances of all the transactions that Namwan has engaged in together with the two companies, he has um, fraud, fraudulently, or the, so, uh, fraudulently represented to, to the, the public that there was an opportunity here to make money, knowing very well that that was not really the case. So that's the intent for this. Mm -hmm. There's also the fraudulent breach of trust, which speaks to the fact that when depositors of men's gold gave their money to men's gold to be invested, Namwan transferred some of the money to other sister companies. So they mentioned Zalufo Media and then some other sister companies that the money was mentioned, uh, transferred to. What it meant is that the customers did not give the money to men's gold to be given to those companies. Okay. So for that instance, they, he, they, they are cited there. for fraudulent breach of trust. Money laundering to us also come in because the money, the way the money was flowing, it did not flow through the financial system that was supposed to be in accordance with our anti-money laundering um, laws mm. for that reason that has been captured here. There's a very interesting aspect w w which I saw in the, in the chart sheet, Dennis, if you can get us there, where we understand some property belonging to Namwon has been confiscated and then also some other items as well as captured in this chart sheet because the men's gold agreements those customers have written to the economic and organized crime office to give them details of the property of namwan of the napia mensa that they have confiscated now what what does the ag say in uh the the latest chart sheet that you have a copy of all right so on that particular matter we need to put it in context because we do know that while the criminal proceeding was ongoing, there was also a civil matter in which some of the aggrieved customers went to court. According to their lawyer, we spoke to last week, they had secured a judgment. And in an attempt to enforce the judgment, they realized that Namwan did not have anything in his name. Mm -hmm. They didn't seem to believe that. They wanted to be sure that he had something in his name against which they could enforce the judgment that they secured. So this is the letter that was written to the Attorney General's mm -hmm. office for the by the customers because they wanted to know, according to them, there was news that Yoko had frozen the assets of Namwan mm -hmm. and had got a court order to go and auction those um, properties. So in their minds, there was money against which they could enforce their judgment. Absolutely. But when they wrote the letter to the Attorney General's office, using the right to information law, per the law, if the information is not with the if the institution that you made the application to, mm -hmm. and that institution knows where the, the information is, they could just refer your letter. I see. So the AG's office referred the letter to Yoko, knowing that it was Yoko that froze the account and that um, got the asset frozen and made the auction. Now, mm -hmm. only today, Yoko gave a letter to the aggrieved customers to indicate that, yes, indeed, there was something of that sort and that the processes are ongoing. Now, the interesting thing is this. And let me show you this. Mm -hmm. When you read the charge sheets, towards the ending part of the brief facts, there is a case made for those assets that were frozen. Mm -hmm. 
And if you permit me, I'll just show you this. That's a very, very important aspect of it. It's yes. because it's a new development which we didn't learn exactly. of in the previous instance. So and that the we customers just read are making a claim. What, what does it, it say? So this is the chart sheet. And what you see on here, the not the two white color, the mm -hmm. off-white color, mm -hmm. is the very last part of the chart sheet, which now speaks to something. And I read it. So I read it from the last paragraph, that in the, cost of in the course of investigations, a number of vehicles were recovered from the accused persons which have been auctioned, hmm. and the proceeds kept in an exhibit, in an exhibit account. I see. Some gold bars were also received from the accused persons. So oh. this is exactly what the, members, the aggrieved customers were looking for, because they wanted to know where the cars were, and if they were auctioned, how much was the money, so okay. that they could enforce their judgment against that money. Great. But when, apparently from this, when Iyoko auctioned the cars, they decided to keep the cars in what they call an exhibit account, and the gold bars too have also been recovered. So some now, gold, all bars, these gold things, bars were retrieved from yes, Namwa. Yes, will come to play when the case eventually begins. When they begin to file discoveries and all that, we we'll now get to understand how many vehicles were uh, seized, how much they realized from the auction, and how, how much gold bars were also recovered. recovered from him. So essentially, that's the new information that we have, which is um, we are working with. So that's, well, that's so the document you see on, on there. Tonight. Now, further on this, joining me in studio is Fred Forsen. He is one of the leaders of the Coalition of aggrieved men's gold customers. Ms. Fawson, thank you for joining us on Ghana thank tonight. You, this latest development must come with some relief to you, um, the Attorney General, is it not? Yes, uh, I think, uh, I believe so, because um, more or less we want justice to prevail. And so if the state think that uh, men's gold, dream marketing, and Mr. Napier may say this is something on towards, or they breach the law, we expect justice to be done, or they, they face the law, so that at the end of the day, Whoever, uh, uh, go, whatever happens, we know that at least they have gone through the law, especially to bring some relief to some uh, the, the customers, because we believe that we have not been treated fairly. If you say we've not been treated fairly, what do you mean? Especially even the, with the state itself and by uh, Nana Pierre Mensa, because Alfred, if you recall, this incident happened in 2018. That is when the company shut down. As we speak, Customers have not been able to retrieve their money. And any time we want to go after number one, we are told that the matter is in court. So for today's action, I think the charges have been crystallized. And so mm -hmm. we would also expect or call on the Attorney General to, to kind of speed up the trial so that we can bring some finality to the issue. We believe that this can also run concurrently with the civil aspect where we as a, a group or as a group, we are fighting for the retrieval of our money, i.e., we are talking to the government and we expect the government to bail us out. I see. This is part of the 61 charges that he was slapped with earlier. That was the earlier ch ch charge, okay. yes. Uh, you have said that he, he moves around with a police escort? Yes, yes. Nanapia Mesa? Yes, as far even as now? I recall, even on the 26th of July when he came to court, we were there. He has state security personnel around him. And you petitioned the IGP we on that? We have petitioned the IGP. We have asked that they, 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 they reverse the deployment of state security around him. What has been the response? We haven't had any response. And even went further and called for his arrest because the activities that he's been doing for the past couple of weeks, we believe that it is immoral, it is unfair. What, because what, what, what do you mean? You are indebted to us. How do you ask us to come and buy a so-called verification access card as a, at a cost of 650 Ghana cities. Well, some of you paid. And unfortunately, some paid. Some of them may be out of desperation. Others, who they really wanted to test the system and know what is happening. And they paid. And even he's giving them some ridiculous date for payment. Some of them, he scheduled them for May 20th, 2025. 2025. For payment, for them to be paid by him. <laughs> I'm telling you, you won't believe this. Wow. I'm telling you, even the rush and his call for people to go and do this verification that he has even given them deadline for. Mm -hmm. 
the schedule's date for payment is 2025. 2025, some 2026, some 2024. But he has I mean, been talking this... on social media, has helped um, some conversations on, on X, formerly yes. Twitter. One of them I was present, and I told yeah. him that the men's good issues has grown bigger than him. If ah. he thinks, yes, Alfred, this is a national issue. Because anytime he comes up, but he's the mastermind. Well, that is what he thinks. He may think he's smarter, but he is not. Anytime he comes around, he only okay. comes to extort money from us. He did that in 2018 when he demanded five percent of our migra uh, for migration of our existing investment. 2020, he brought up Payboy, if you recall. And did the Payboy pay? The Payboy didn't pay anybody. That one too, they took nine percent of our of our investment. Oh, and uh, come to think of it, where on earth? That you, the one who owe me, now looks for a debt collecting company called Payboy. That if I go and see Payboy, Payboy now Payboy will, pay will be able to pay me. Why can't you pay me directly? And you want me to go and see Payboy? And this Payboy is a company created by him. Number one. Number one. Payboy is owned by him. You remember in 2020 when Yoko okay. arrested them, Payboy came up with a statement that they have uh, uh, associated uh, they, themselves they, they and, and very and good. And when did they reconnect again, re-engage? When did men's go re-engage Payboy again? When? <clears throat> so we understand in this uh, latest chart sheet, yeah. which my colleague Dennis Wadham just read through, yeah. that uh, the Attorney General says that some bars of gold, gold bars, yes. and some uh, vehicles have been confiscated yes. from Nam One. Yes. Now, what are you expecting beyond that now that it's going to be held as evidence from what we understand going forward? Yes, uh, I, we've heard that. We, we know we are aware, and that's why we are chasing him to disclose. We want them to disclose the quantity of those ghost bars and the amount they realized from the sale of those vehicles. Because okay. we believe that all those things could help in paying us. So even though they are going to use that as exhibit for the criminal prosecution, we, are, we don't think if the, the mere disclosure to us will jeopardize the action in court. But you, you met Yoko on this matter? We went to Yoko. I mean, today, we went to Yoko, the, and um, they've given us a, res a, a letter, even though that's not the final response, okay. that we should be patient. They are in the process of compiling the information, which some of them are related to some of these matters. We believe that it's the right thing because we need it. After at the end of the day, they are for us. I remember way back in 2019, Yoko said that if Nam one failed to pay us, mm -hmm. those confiscated assets, the state is going to rely on them to pay us. And for five years, the gentleman has failed to pay us. We don't even see why Yoko is delaying or they are not advising the government to pay us. Okay, quickly, before we go, you say you have confidence in this latest development. 39 charges. Some of them are almost the same as the earlier, <laughs> the, ones. The earlier ones in the 61. Yes. So the Attorney General... What do you expect differently I this time around? I think the difference in this one, one, the case has been moved higher. Initially, mm -hmm. it was at the circuit court. Now, I'm, I'm told, even though I've not read the details of the, 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 the charge sheet, I'm told it's now in the high court. Yes. And now it's the AG himself. Initially, mm -hmm. it was being done by the police. So now the AG himself went to court. And first. So I think they are giving some life or action to it, and we expect them. In fact, what we are expecting is a speedy trial. If okay. it's possible that a certain MP is being asked to, it, 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 a certain MP's trial is being done on daily basis. This is the one that the whole of Ghana you want, want men's to see cases daily to action. On so daily on this platform, we are calling for daily trial of number one, brie marketing and uh, men's gold. Okay. How is the uh, condition of the, the men's gold customers? And what's Very happening dire. to you? Very dire. Lives are in tatters. Right. People are blind. I mean, life is difficult. Even what to eat for some of, most of the customers is very bad. Thank Vichy's you. Up. Mr. Fuerfo, we would have to go, and unfortunately, for, 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 kindly bear with me, we would have to go. But it's a case that we'll follow quite closely, so trust that we'll do that. But this, thank you very much for joining us. Fred Forcing speaks for the men's gold, aggrieved men's gold customers. Also reacting to the developments earlier today. Coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, Gabon's President Ali Bongo cries for help after the military seized power in a coup and put him under house arrest. This becomes the ninth coup in the former French colony in Africa. Stay with us. There's some reaction.
on this matter. Ken Ofeso Sabuaji is going to be joining us right after this quick break from Ghana tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of Flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market. We take equal quantities of Flamingo paint and this ordinary paint. We then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint and the gentleman on my right will use the Flamingo superior paint. As you can clearly see, Flamingo has the obvious better hiding. Furthermore, Flamingo has painted a much larger area. You know, one bucket of Flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market. Flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage. Flamingo paint, simply superior. Welcome back. This is Ghana tonight. Pre this Gabon's deposed president Ali Bongo has appealed for help after the army deposed him in a coup and put him under house arrest. He was speaking earlier today from what he said was his residence. He had supporters across the world to raise their voices. Earlier, army officers appeared on TV, which we showed you earlier, to say they had taken part. This is Ali Bongo earlier today. I'm Ali Bongo Ondimba, President of Gabon, and I'm to send a message to all the friends that we have all over the world to tell them to make noise, to make noise for the people here. I'm Ali Bongo Ondimba, President of Gabon, and I'm to send a message to all the friends that we have all over the world to tell them to make noise, to make noise for the people here have arrested me. He still well, guess what? This is something that um, happened as a result of the military earlier also indicating that they had annulled the election results on Saturday, which Ali Bongo was declared the winner, but the opposition claimed that it, it was fraudulent because of instances that happened. The internet went down, the lights went down, and then the moment lights were restored, the results were all over the place. The officers also said that they had arrested one of Mr. Bongo's sons for treason. Now, later, they, they announced that Mr. Bongo would be replaced by the head of the presidential guard, who is actually his cousin. General Bryce Oluigui uh, in Wema. So, Ken Alfeso Sabaji retired. Security analyst, he has been involved in conflict mediation in Sudan and many other places on the continent. He understands how things play out in this way. He's joining us on Zoom. Ken Alfeso Sabaji retired. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Now, the last time I spoke to you, I know you predicted that some of these things were going to happen after Niger. It was going to be some more coups. This shouldn't come to you as a surprise, you know. Well, thanks for having me. I think um, it was Professor Kwesienin who was a bit more specific. My line of argument has always been that there are triggers for every event in life, including coups. So when those triggers and those... Um, structural and proximate factors are present in any country, then the likelihood of coups is not a question of um, when, or not a question of whether it's possible, but a question of when. So all the signs are there uh, or have been there in the case of Gabon as well as some other African countries 
who are toying with democracy, changing constitutions, entrenching themselves in power, for instance, repressing the opposition, uh, suppressing public participation or popular participation in politics, virtually creating one-party states. The same narrative, which got us 60 years down the line, and we have said that we have embraced democracy since the end of the Cold War, and yet we have some leaders within the continent, Gabon being a typical one, uh, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, Benin, and, and some others, you see, who just pay lip service to democratic principles. And that is why these schools are happening, because our leaders within ECOWAS, within the African Union, are not serious about what democracy is. We have not even talked about other factors like corruption. We've not talked about other factors like misgovernance, mismanaging economies, and setting up systems that only enrich a few people to the impoverishment of the, of the masses. Of the masses. Uh, but Keno, you see, this is the eighth coup in former French colonies in Africa, at least in the last three years. And when we look at the larger situation on the continent, this is the ninth coup in Africa. Six out of the nine have occurred in the West African sub-region. What does this tell you? There is some consensus among academicians or those who follow the trends as regards coups, that there seems to be a wave of anti-French sentiments, especially within West Africa, exemplified in Mali, uh, in Guinea, which already for several decades was a bad boy in the eyes of France. Then in Burkina Faso, then in Niger, Chad, um, Gabon now, even Togo. Um, Gabon and Togo have joined the Commonwealth, for instance. Now, what accounts for this anti-French sentiment are multiple factors. It is the nature of the relationship between France and its former colonies. It's as if what your Akan uh, speakers have been saying on some platforms, that neo Kansi says he's gone, but he's still uh, loitering around the corner. So our former colonialists have left, but their hands are still cr uh, controlling scenarios within um, Africa. And Cote d'Ivoire is a typical example. The whole question is, if you don't want characters like Russia and Wagner to come to Africa, and you've been here for donkey years, and the status quo in Africa in terms of security and stability is not changing, then of course the people you know, reserve the right to determine whom they want to come to help them. That also creates tension. If I come into the coup in, uh, in Gabon, it's a very tricky one because the coup leader who was the commander of the presidential guard, Ali Bongo's presidential guard, that commander like General Chiani in Niger who has toppled Ali Bongo, is a cousin to Ali Bongo. So why would a cousin overthrow his uncle or whatever it is? This is a question that people are asking. Could it be that France looked at the options under Ali Bongo and was not happy that Ali Bongo was going to serve his interest and therefore wanted some way to get rid of Ali Bongo and bring in somebody closer to him and so on and so forth. Of course, these are all academic uh, questions. But the fact remains that the announcement made by the Constitutional Court in Gabon after one or two days that Ali Bongo had won um, 62 or 64 point seven percent is not the truth. I there see. are sources in Gabon which are saying that Ali Bongo's party won 33 <laughs> percent. So, election manipulating election rigging is also at the center of uh, 
the coup in, um, what do you call it, in, 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 in Gabon. In, in, in Gabon. Can I, uh, on that particular bit, because now Ali Bongo, in the video we just played, which has gone viral, is asking for help, that the international community should step in, the AU and so on, to all step in and make some noise about what's happening in Gabon. Do you see this help coming? Well, it's not going to come. The region that it belongs to, the regional block or sub-regional block mm -hmm. called the Economic Community of Central African States, or ECAS, will not be in a position to launch any military intervention as ECOWAS was contemplating. But ECAS, together with the African Union, right. are going to deploy diplomatic uh, interventions. The purpose being to see how soon or how fast the military can transition back to um, democracy. Indeed, in the case of Gabon, it's very, very interesting. If anybody makes the point that there is going to be a restoration of democracy, you need to ask what form of democracy is uh, are those people asking for? Because mm -hmm. there's a country that got independence in 1960 from France, I cannot recall the first leader, but whoever was the leader ruled for seven years and was toppled by the senior Omar Bongo, 1967. Omar Bongo toppled that ruler, ruled the country all the way to 2003, changed the constitution, abolished the, uh, the second term, limit. term or third term limit, mm -hmm. i.e. in Gabon, you run a third term of seven years for two terms, 14 years, you step aside. Omar Bongo changed the constitution, continued beyond 2003, died of heart failure in 2009, then his son took over. So since 2009, this Ali Bongo, who is crying for people to make noise that he's under arrest and so on, between him and his father, they have ruled Gabon for about 56, 57 years. Very interesting it, uh, point you made there, Colonel Fessor Sabwaji. And, and that lays the foundation that ties into the many issues that uh, some have raised about the, the instances in, in Gabon specifically. This is an ongoing conversation, Kennel. And so I really would be staying with you in the coming days as to how things play out in Gabon. Thank you very much, Kennel Fessor Sabwaji is retired is a security analyst but coming up next year on gonna tonight new twist in the race between francis adainimo and boachie jacon to secure the fifth slot for the new patriotic party's flag bearer contest as the party directs that only national council members will vote well this was a decision that was earlier today communicated by the party after a crucial meeting um, to decide the way forward after the Super Delegates Conference over the weekend. Justin Fiponkonia is the General Secretary of the party. Take a look. An emergency meeting. As you recall, just this Saturday, we had our Super Delegate elections. After the elections and counting was done, there was a tie on the fifth position between Honorable Adenimo and Mr. Fuachi Ejako. Either to the elections committee by their guidelines under section 25 stated that where there is a tie, there will be a rerun to get a clear winner or victor. However, today, National Council, which is the body that constituted the Presidential Election Committee, varied Section 25 of the rules and guidelines by the Presidential Elections Committee to read that, yes, there will be a rerun. But the real run, the delegates will not be the special uh, delegates or the delegate that constituted the special delegate. But however, the National Council will break the tie, meaning that members of the National Council are going to be the delegates for the elections on Saturday.
uh, the General Secretary of the party. So National Council, who are they? And how is it composed as per the NPP's own uh, constitution? Take a look at this. This is the composition of the National Council who, according to the party's latest decision, are going to be the ones who determine the fate of Francis Nadaidimo and Boachin Chimante Jaco. Take a look. The voting members of the National Executive Committee and then also 20 members of parliament chosen by the party's parliamentary group. So the leadership of the majority or the, the MPP group in parliament would, would decide the 20. Now that's tricky. And look at the C. Regional representatives as well. And past national chairpersons, past general secretaries, past presidents, past vice presidents, past presidential candidates, past running mates, president, vice president, presidential candidate, and it goes on and on. And, and these are the, that's the composition of the National Council of the NPP. So in this case, for instance, John Buedo and the others, the general secretaries, all of those people have a vote. We'll see how things play out. Um, in the coming days because there's been some reactions already by one of the two persons involved in this matter. Now, let's go quickly um, to the National Democratic Congress uh, coming up next because the NDC's planned Occupy Bank of Ghana risks has been injuncted as the police have filed court processes to restrain them from using certain routes um, during that said day. Let's hear from the minority uh, Mano Amakofiboa addressed the press earlier today on this matter. We must say that we are very disappointed with this development, which is clearly an attempt to scuttle the protest, which is intended to hold the governor of the Bank of Ghana and his two deputies accountable for their mismanagement of the bank, which has resulted in an unprecedented and colossal loss of 60.8 billion Ghana cities. Uh, an amount which has uh, had serious consequences on the economy and pushed close to one million Ghanaians to poverty, into poverty. Uh, let us assure the people of Ghana that as representatives of the people of Ghana we will keep our sacred duty, and indeed we will, our sacred duty to uphold the public interest in line with our constitutional guarantee right. There's absolutely no basis for the police to suggest that members of parliament were going to ransack the Bank of Ghana. Uh, with the, the police uh, can be assured that if they decide to withdraw their, their motion, we can sit down and conclude on that. But they cannot tell us that we should go and protest at the Independence Square. Uh, what is the basis of, of, of that one? It will not be effective. So we are, our doors are still open, but as far as we are concerned, we have been stabbed in the back by the Greater Accra Regional Police. Well, that's the, the position of the minority on the latest with the police. We'll stay on this particular one in the coming days, but coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, two people have lost their lives at Gojenu near Hohoi in the Volta region following a violent uh, altercation between the police and some members of the community. Uh, we'll tell you exactly how it all happened and we're going to show you that's um videos of of what in fact pick some pictures of what happened earlier calm has been restored at that particular area that's Kotenu, near hohoi in the volta region following that violent clash between community that, that community and the police and the police patrol vehicle and the motorbike we have we have pictures of, of that um the motorbike rider were involved in an accident after which some of the community members in a confrontation set the police vehicle on fire. Now, there's some conflicting reports on this and we went to the community and spoke to some members of the community about exactly what happened. Take a look. The Godenu community revealed a scene marked by the aftermath of a police raid that occurred following an alleged accident involving a motorbike rider. 
The impact of the police's presence was evident everywhere, even though their account of the incident did not mention these details. According to the residents, the police entered the community after their accident with the motorbike rider had already taken place outside the area. The police allegedly fired at the residents, resulting in the death of three individuals and leaving several others injured. Numerous motorbikes were reportedly set on fire and a significant amount of property damaged, including the destruction of vehicles, household appliances, shops and even the chief's residence. Togbo is away. Just that Togbo is not in town. And two of his vehicles were also smashed, which is also very unfortunate because if anything at all, the police come to town. It's Togbo who will host them. And I understand when they were even smashing the windscreen of the vehicle, someone tried to inform them. That, that is talk with vehicle, they say they don't care. In an account given in the Eve language, the wife of the chief of Bigodo, Doris Kojobra, recounted that she took cover in her home upon hearing the gunshots while the chaos continued. Another victim, a taxi driver, had his vehicle destroyed while he was visiting a friend from another community. They have some celebration where they invited us. We came yesterday, way today to came before we did inside and we hear something they happened outside. This situation has sparked fear and tension within the community with some of the youth expressing a desire to arm themselves against potential future instances of police brutality. So it, uh, these are the details of the, the extent of destruction as a result of what happened in the community earlier today. Uh, subsequently, the member of parliament for the area, John Peter Mewo, has also been fuming about what he described as the, the acts by the police commander in the area. The police has not spoken as yet be, beyond the statement that they issued on this matter. The assemblyman for the area as well has been talking. The municipal chief executive is our guest tomorrow on this particular development and matters arising. What we understand is that as we speak, they are currently having a municipal security council meeting um, to determine the way forward as a result of this incident. I want to say thank you very much for staying with us here on Ghana tonight. To join us same time tomorrow for some more. Make some time and visit 3news.com. I am Alfred Akansi. Have a good night. Ghana Tonight is brought to you by Flamingo Paint, superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage, simply superior.